Hello, I'm Jamie and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about episode three of series five of Ghosts and this one is called Pineapple Day. It's one of the episodes I've been looking forward to since the show started and this is the episode that tells us all about Kitty's backstory and how she died. This episode, potentially my favourite episode of this, uh, this series, I thought it was just fantastic from start to finish. There's so many things in this episode. So let's just get straight into the main point, the main thing we wanna be hearing about, and that is Kitty. I love how this started finding this accounts from, like this account book from Kitty's house when she was alive. Um, and yeah, talking about this party that they had that was Pineapple Day, which was the day that she died. The main thing about love I love about this, apart from obviously finally finding out how Kitty died, was the fact that it felt like they were like, not making fun, that's the wrong word, but it felt like the ghosts were representing the fans trying to figure out what happened with Kitty. She's definitely been the most mysterious. Um, and I absolutely love this. I thought this was such a fantastic way of doing it. It's a kind of similar episode to the Thomas Thorne episode where they're trying to figure out what happened to Thomas using things that the ghosts saw or heard when they were kind of, haunting the house. When Kitty started talking about Pineapple Day, I was convinced that my theory about her being allergic to pineapples was right, but that was quite quickly disproved. Um, but I was I was so sure I had it because she ate the pineapple and then it was later in the day that she died. So I was convinced that I'm, I had it right, but I didn't. They are continuously surprising us. I think we've, we've said when we've been talking about theories that we can come up with a hundred different theories about how uh, something will happen and then they will go and think of something that is completely out there but still works really well like they are continuously surprising us so yeah I'm not surprised that we didn't figure it out. I really liked how much like hatred the ghosts had towards Eleanor again that really embodies the fans feelings about Eleanor um, so yeah thinking that she poisoned Kitty, which is um, the leading theory that we had was that, yeah, Eleanor poisoned Kitty because she was jealous of her being welcomed into her family. Um, and yeah, it, it makes sense because of how much hate, like, animosity she had towards Kitty throughout everything that we've heard. Again, Kitty being very oblivious to the fact of this. Um, and I loved Thomas calling Eleanor a bitch. That was so funny. Um, and yeah, this idea that he's got really into gangster rap and finds it like the best form of poetry. I absolutely loved that. I thought it was hilarious. Um, like every time he said it, it caught me off guard. It was so, so funny. I loved all the different ideas and like avenues they went down. The, the idea that one of the maids poisoned Kitty or then they actually meant it for Eleanor and Kitty accidentally had Eleanor's poisoned one. Um, the yeah, the idea that this poison was meant for somebody else and uh, Kitty was just an innocent victim in this. Um, so all these theories I thought were really strong. Again, very reminiscent of the ones that we've had ourselves. And then this idea that Ellen has got this herbal, this herb garden, including deadly nightshade. Um, and I could like, my reaction was that too, it was the exact same to the ghost reaction. It was like, that's it, herb garden, she's poisoned her. Or maybe during hide and seek, Kitty's gone over there and accidentally eaten the deadly nightshade. And I like that they kind of thought that Eleanor was doing it like slowly. She was like repetitively poisoning her. So it didn't seem that obvious, which I thought was quite smart. I didn't think of that. Um, and then they mentioned hide and seek. And I was like, this is it. This is when it's going to happen. Um, and then this idea of there, of Kitty overhearing people talking about crimes they're committing. And then that gives another motive for why Kitty should be killed. And I loved this episode. I loved all of this exploration of her backstory, but I just kept feeling so sad for Kitty that she is like, she's so innocent and so naive and childlike. She's got all these different people potentially like having a motive to want it her dead. Kit like Eleanor for the inheritance and jealousy and these people for her overhearing them talking about stuff. Um, and again, like we, the episode kind of goes a bit further, especially with Eleanor that, uh, you know, she kind of get a bit of redemption from this. Um, but yeah, this makes me just feel so bad for Kitty. And of course, the great reveal, the plot twist was that she was bitten by a spider that was on the pineapple. This, I thought, this is really good. I really liked that it was something plausible that also none of us thought of. Like, of, like why would we think it was a spider that's got onto a pineapple and stung her? But, um, 
yeah, I thought it was a really good way of doing it. It linked everything to her, like her kind of like we all kind of thought she died of being poisoned that was like I think most people thought that it was poison you know venom is very similar to poison so the kind of reactions that she would have just falling asleep and gladly a peaceful death but yeah so it's similar but it's different enough to uh you know give us a very satisfying plot twist as I mentioned before we do get this uh, Eleanor Redemption, little well, little Redemption, I don't forgive her, obviously, but she apologises for her actions and her treatment to Kitty and admits that her jealousy was stupid and that she's been a bad sister, which I thought was really nice, especially for Kitty. But then we also, like, Kitty wouldn't, unless she heard that when she was dying, but I guess she was in that weird state where she was dying but not like as a ghost so she wouldn't have been able to hear that and also there were no ghosts in the room like it definitely seems like there wasn't any ghosts in the room so they wouldn't have heard her apologize for it so they might still believe that she's evil um and yeah kitty's just none the wiser she just thought you know she didn't have any hatred or uh you know she didn't dislike her eleanor in any way but yeah i loved how this as well went on to kitty thinking she could potentially have superpowers like spider-man that i think is a very kitty thing to do again just kind of emphasizing this very like naive childlike nature about her but overall i thought the way that they did kitty's backstory was just incredible i it was everything i kind of wanted from it there was acknowledgement of all the fan theories there was you know a little bit of like teasing I guess like trying to like you know and just showing I think just how inventive the writers are like the main six like how they have able to you know create a really really good mystery and there's been hints throughout the whole season about what could have happened to her and with Eleanor and all this kind of thing and I think that they've pulled it off really really well and I do like that nobody actually killed her it was an accident because I think the thought of somebody going out of their way to hurt Kitty is just horrible. Like, she, she's such a nice person. She's such an innocent person. Like, why would anybody want to hurt her? So I do like that it was a genuine accident. And I really like the way that Kitty acknowledged the fact that if it wasn't, if it was me who died and not Eleanor, then Alison wouldn't exist. And their lives, their, well, their deaths are better for the fact that Alison is alive and she is around so I thought that was really nice and I think it just kind of shows how she sees the world and I think that's just really nice to have such that positive um like attitude and just gratitude for the way that things have worked out even if they're not been that great so yeah that was the main thing to talk about in this episode but I also really like everything else that happened so there was a couple of other like side plots um the main one being with Barclay Beg Chuckwin um about them try Alison and Mike trying to get him to join in on their golf course sale um and again he comes in scheming which is what we expect I was curious about how he would uh you know try and cause trouble again and the way he's doing it in this is by trying to get more money out of them and take uh, advantage of their the fact that they have no good finances. I thought there was some nice callbacks to previous episode with Al- with Mike being very bad at negotiating. I loved that when they did reach a deal, like Alison kind of like nodded and he made sure that Alison was agreeing before he shook the hands. I think that's a really good sign that he is like maturing a little bit, especially after this discussion he had with Barkley about how he was scared of uh like becoming a father because he's always been quite like irresponsible and then that just showed that he wasn't rushing into it he wanted to make sure that his wife was on board that it was all agreed by everybody so I thought that was really good and I just love the idea of those two getting locked in the safe together um I thought I did kind of see it coming I think the way that Mike was opening the safe and closing it back again that something bad was going to happen um and also we did have somebody get locked in the safe in the US version as well very different uh, like outcome but um, I did quite like that they're kind of similar in that aspect and I think they've got yeah two very dramatic people getting locked in this safe like an hour and a half is a long time to be locked in there especially by the looks of it, it was very hot and you know this idea that no one's going to hear you that would have been very scary um, but yeah I thought it was nice you know, you know them trying like them playing games together and uh, Mike like halving the wagon wheel with him in a way it does humanize Barkley a bit because he kind of stops being a villain and starts being a bit more like just a selfish human really um whereas I feel like in previous episodes he's very like villain-like um I loved his screaming I thought that was really funny um just 
yeah, it's just fantastic. I, I think he's such a great character, even though every time he comes on the screen, I'm like, oh no, what's going to happen now? I think he's just fantastic. He's very, very well written and performed. It's, it's just fantastic. I'd also really, really loved um, that Mike didn't know that there was a safe for the five years that they've lived there. He didn't know that there was a giant walk-in safe in the house, which again, I'm not that surprised at. If anybody's not going to know about something for a while, it's going to be Mike. Um, and there are like probably hundreds of rooms in that house. So yeah, it's not too surprising, but you would think that you would know about a massive safe. And I am surprised that Alison as well didn't find those books um, before as well. The other two slightly smaller side plots were um, Alison trying to find a nursery for the baby and wanting it to be Fanny's room. And then the ghosts competing to win a blue plaque for the house. I thought both of these were quite fun side plots. I thought um, Alison and Fanny's interactions were very funny. Um, and, you know, Fanny encouraging her to be a bit more, like, forward with people. Obviously not saying in that way. I thought that was just a really, really funny, like, double entendre that they played there. And, yeah, just Fanny being so serious about it. It was just hilarious. Um, and I also liked how they showed the differences between like how like rich people raise children uh, like in the past and how people raise children now. Obviously, I still think that is that like, you know, rich people always have like kind of a nanny to raise their children. But the fact that Fanny wanted to be far away from her child so she didn't hear her scream and didn't have to deal with it. Whereas Alison obviously wants to be near the child to be able to look after it and comfort it. And I think that definitely is reminiscent of the way that Fanny was raised and how she's very, very slowly, but is like coming out of her ways, but she is pretty much still stuck there. But um, yeah, I thought that was really, really funny. The, um, the blue plaque thing I thought was quite good as well. Just Thomas, Julian and Humphrey all competing to try and feel like the most important death there. Whereas obviously all they really care about is the noble people, the, the people in history that we already know about, like Henry VIII having dined there. Um, so that I thought was all very good. I liked they just kind of left Alison to it and was like, yeah, great idea, Alison, submit all of us and see what happens. Um, and I thought that, I mean, I haven't talked about the, the whole is it cake yet, but I loved that running thing throughout this whole episode. Everybody kind of disregarding it as something entertaining to watch, but always getting intrigued and pulled in by it, um, especially with like the captain and, and um, Kitty, like the captain being again quite father-like and trying to get her to open up about the day that she died and then getting distracted by the, <laughs> the cake show. Um, but I thought all of that was very, very sweet. I thought it was such a lovely episode. I, it's not, I'm not surprised that Kitty loves Is It Cake? Um, and yeah, the blue plaque sent at the end to be made of cake was was a very nice way to end the episode, ending it on, you know, that pure joy and happiness that we get from Kitty, I thought was really nice, especially from what is, you know, it, it's a sad episode in a way from, you know, we learn how Kitty died. And to me, I feel like this is probably the least emotional episode talking about their deaths because it all it is kind of played off as a big mystery and the ghosts working together to solve it, um, which I think was quite entertaining. I think this was quite a good idea because out of all of them, I do think Kitty's would have been the most emotional if they'd kind of done it in a different way. But this kind of balanced the, you know, the sadness of, of Kitty's death with all the fun stuff that was happening afterwards and the ghost being genuinely curious and also concerned about Kitty and how she like viewed Eleanor and how she viewed her life, but ultimately kind of coming around to the fact that Kitty, Kitty's positivity is really good. I thought it was such a fantastic episode. I loved every second of it. I think it's definitely, oh, there are some good episodes later in this season though, but I, yeah, as soon as I watched this one, I was like, that is a fantastic episode. It's so, so good. Um, Cause I thought like it, it could have got, it could have skirted quite close to being too similar to Thomas's episode, but they didn't. They made it really, really like separate and, it was just, yeah, genuinely really, really good. I just thought that they touched on all the different theories that we had and kind of just acknowledged the fans a little bit and all the kind of theorizing that we've done. I just thought it was, it was such an entertaining episode. I think that's everything I was gonna say in this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then please leave a like. It really helps the channel. And comment down below your thoughts on episode three of Ghosts season five. We are halfway through the final series, which it's happened too quickly, um, but it's been fantastic so far. And subscribe if you wanna see more videos of um, Ghosts. I'll have some more out for you soon. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.